Hi, this is Adam from MakerState, and I'm here with our fifth webinar for the Maker Fellows program. And right now, we're going to talk about Scratch Boss Battle Part 1. Okay, so this is Part 1 of 3 of the Scratch Boss Battle. And in this part of the Boss Battle, we're going to talk about creating our hero character, creating an enemy boss, and then creating a projectile attack that, that the enemy is going to use on us that we're going to have to avoid, like some fireballs or something like that. Okay, so... As far as materials, what you need, you need your charge computers, your internet access, of course, and uh, Scratch accounts for all your students. Optionally, you can use your pre-printed Scratch blocks to pseudocode or talk about some of these programs before you actually write them. And then your rubric and your parent report. And again, you can find these last two items right here in the STEM Collab, right under links to challenge materials, where we have our lesson plan, our project prototype, which is my version of the prototype, and then the rubric and the challenge report, okay? And the rubric should be handed out at the beginning of class or as at the beginning of the challenge so that students can assess themselves and kind of understand what's expected of them as they work through the challenge. And the challenge report can be handed out at the end and given to parents, administrators, anyone else who might have an interest in knowing what students are doing in their makerspace, okay? And I, what I didn't mention here, because you need it for all challenges, is the design cycle poster and magnets, which we really hope you're using to uh, you know, physically guide your students through this challenge process and have them thinking about you know, the different stages of designing something and the different questions that arise at each of those stages, discover, create, and improve, okay? So moving on to our discover section. So hopefully some of your students have played video games that have boss battles and they can relate to the concept of a boss battle. So you might just want to start off the conversation by saying, have you ever played a video game with a boss battle? And these can be think, pair, share questions or group questions, but moving that question into what are the different things that we need in a boss battle? Well, we need a, a player or a character for, for the human player to, to play. We need an enemy boss that we're going to fight against. And then we're going to need you know, some sort of attacks or some way for them to fight. Maybe we might want to create some health or something like that. We're going to need different movements for, for both these characters. We're going to need maybe some events that happen when the fight is over, when one player wins or, or, the, or the player loses, right? And kind of central to, to these conversations is the idea of a non-player character or an NPC, as it's commonly called in you know, video game development circles. A non-player character is simply just a character in a game that's not controlled by a player, right? So a player that's automatically controlled by the computer. And this is inching towards what we might start to call um, automated, or, uh, this is inching towards what we might start to call AI or artificial intelligence, right? Um, and, you know, we're not going to get so deep into that, but just keep that in mind that as we're programming some, some actions and behaviors for our character, think about how you'd want, uh, how bosses in video games do behave and how you'd want them to behave in this game, right? Other keywords that are going to come up here are projectile attacks, so projectile just being an object that flies through the air. We're going to use fireballs in this case, or you can use something different in your game, but I'm using fireballs. And finally, the random number generator, which might be familiar if, if your students have done uh, the apple catcher. Um, but we're going to use that to actually control some aspects of our enemy's behavior, right? And that's another thing to think about in regards to artificial intelligence, that sometimes we want characters, enemies in games to behave randomly. It'd be a very boring game if we knew exactly how the enemy was going to behave and they behave the same way every time, right? So using... A random number generator to influence their movement can be really useful for creating more dynamic and exciting enemies in our games okay so let's just take a quick look over here at the at the build and you have you know the video in the stem collab to, to walk you through this but let's just look at these scripts really quickly on a high level now that they're already written in front of us okay so there's three distinct scripts here so there's a lot of stuff going on in this you know you open this project and it looks a little intimidating with all the things that are happening but it's really only three scripts, one for each sprite, and they're not super long or complicated and they don't really impact one another. So you can really break this project down into smaller modules and do it, you know, kind of three in three big chunks, I would say. So for the hero, 
this is kind of a, a basic hero movement script, very similar to what we used in Flappy Fish uh, in many ways. So we just have our when green flag clicked. We're setting our rotation style so that when we flip or turn around, we're only looking left and right and not flipping upside down. We're setting a starting location. And then forever, we're just moving to the right, pointing and moving to the right when the right arrow is pressed, pointing and moving to the left when the left arrow is pressed. And so that looks like this. And that's it. And we're only giving side to side movement here, no up and down movement, okay? For the dragon, we are again setting that rotation style and then forever, we're pointing the dragon towards the hero. So every time this loop runs again, the dragon will point towards the hero. We have next costume running kind of forever, which we have two costumes here. So that's kind of cool. We just flip back and forth between these two. And that will just like create a little bit more, a little more life in our, in our uh, sprite here. And then finally, we're using this glide block, this block right here, glide one second to x y except we've replaced all of these variables with random numbers using our random number generator pick random right so glide pick random 0.3 to 1 seconds and then we glide to a random x position between negative 150 and 150 and a random y position between 50 and 180 so that's basically going to keep us on the top third of the screen more or less and not all the way on the edges but getting closer to the edges again our, the, the um the maximum and minimum height and width of our screen are positive 240 to negative 240 and positive 180 to negative 180 okay so this dragon is just going to keep flying around and watching our hero and going to the next costume as as it does that right and then finally the fireballs are an entirely different um script and these are very similar to our apples and apple catcher actually and when the green flag is clicked, we're going to forever just start at the dragon, point towards the hero, and then repeat until either touching the hero or touching the edge, moving 10 steps. And again, we're using that or block here from operators to choose between one of two touching conditions from sensing, okay? So that's basically all the code for, for this, this part of the challenge here, okay? So let's go back to our improve phase so once your students get to that point you can move on to improve and do your play test so that can either be a gallery walk or a think pair share kind of duo play test okay and just some basic questions to guide you through this are is there an enemy boss npc does the enemy have a projectile attack does the enemy npc have unpredictable movements using that random number generator right and then do the en engineer do anything to go beyond the challenge requirements and are there any other bugs or unexpected behaviors that need to be fixed, okay? So those are just some basic questions that your students can ask each other or ask themselves as they're play testing each other's projects. And then we have some extra challenges for this and I've kind of warned against going too far ahead with extra challenges because we're gonna have a part two and a part three for this challenge and I wouldn't want students to do something that's gonna make it harder for them to add something else later on, but Doing any of these things should be totally fine. So experimenting with the enemy NPC script to try to program more sophisticated movements. So here we have a really simple, just three line movement script, point towards the hero, next costume and glide around. But what if we, I don't know, made the hero fly closer or more towards the, uh, more towards our, our hero, right? So I don't know, I'm just gonna try to do this off the top of my head quickly, but maybe somewhere in here if we added a repeat 10 steps move 10 repeat 10 times move 10 steps this would in theory have the dragon flying closer to our hero because our dragon's always pointed towards the hero and now the dragon's flying towards the hero for a hundred pixels after every single you know run through of this loop so that was just a quick idea i had definitely just experiment with adding more things here and seeing how adding more different ch or changing things in this loop will change the behavior of your dragon and think about this as a player what kind of behaviors would be interesting or difficult even to fight against and try to program those behaviors okay and along with that you can also add more costumes to the enemy npc or to your hero for that matter but enemy npc we have these two costumes what happens if we added another costume if i just stop this for a second and maybe just 
added here let's just do this i'm going to duplicate this costume right here and then i'm just going to grab a pen or this pencil and just start drawing even some more kind of fire and make this flame look a little bit more explosive maybe i'll make this line a little bit thicker and do this like so a little red a little yellow oh whoops did i get yellow there we go a little yellow you get the idea so let's see what happens if we run this So there's a very fiery, very ferocious dragon, okay? So those are just some really quick examples of, of how we can add some more movements or behaviors to this, okay? You can also add some dialogue to this or, you, you know, using your say or think blocks, or you could try adding some sound to it, though we're definitely going to do that in one of the later parts of this, so don't you don't have to worry about that now. Um, and that's uh, that's basically going to do it for, for, this, for this part of the challenge. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as you wrap up this challenge, after your play test, you want to hit your uh, circle debrief and just talk about how this challenge went for people and if people struggled with the random numbers and if they struggled with this kind of series of loops in here and things like that. And then get back into the STEM collab and hit your prep and practice and your quiz for this challenge and also start practicing and preparing for part two of this boss battle build, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this was useful and I hope uh, you have a good makerspace delivering this challenge, okay? Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.